Hello friends, Nathan Tay Ubernis here. Welcome to the next installment of my Warband tutorial series. In this video, we will be going over uh, weapons and shields, looking at all the different stats that weapons can have, describing what all these numbers and words on their descriptions in the store mean, um, and hopefully helping to inform your decision of what to use as your loadout during your playthrough. Now there are a couple different types of weapons uh, that are governed by your weapon proficiency skills. Uh, these types are one-handed, two-handed, pole arms, crossbows, bows, and thrown weapons. Now there are a few weapons that fall into uh, multiple categories. Uh, there are a couple of axes that can be used as pole arms or as two-handed weapons. Uh, there are some swords and other weapons that can be used as either one-handed or two-handed. Um, and then there are uh, axes that can be either thrown or used as a one-handed weapon. I don't see any in this store. Um, and then there's uh, the ones that can be used as thrown weapons or as pole arms. Now the sets change depending on how you're using the weapons. Um, with the one-handed, two-handed weapons, it only depends on whether or not you are using a shield. Uh, that's that's the only thing. It, it automatically switches to a two-handed weapon if you do not have a shield equipped. And uh, if you have a shield equipped, you're using it as a one-handed weapon. And when your shield breaks, you automatically start using it as a two-handed weapon. Um, with pole arms and two-handed weapons, uh, or with thrown and one-handed weapons... Uh, how you use it uh, can be changed by using the X key. The X on your keyboard is the default uh, key binding for switching how your weapon is used. Um, but when you uh, switch from a polearm to a two-handed weapon, uh, you lose speed and you lose the ability to do thrust damage with it. Uh, so there's a little bit of a trade-off there. Now, uh, the one-handed weapons, when you're choosing to use them, they swing. They're, they're characterized by swinging faster, um, doing slightly less damage, and being able to be used with a shield. Two-handed weapons, on the other hand, uh, they swing generally slower, doing more damage, and you cannot use a shield with them. Pole arms, um, they have their long reach, uh, they're best used on horseback for this reason, because if somebody gets up in your face in a fight, uh, pole arms are less effective, uh, with the exception of quarterstaffs and short spears, which work just well. Uh, they, they work well and uh, can be used face-to-face -face off a horse. Uh, with the ranged weapons, crossbows, bows, and thrown. Uh, crossbows, you basically, the more money you spend, the better off you're going to be with crossbows. Um, there's not a specific skill associated with crossbows, so they're a good option if you don't want to spend a lot of your skill points uh, on your ranged weapons. Um, any character with melee stats can pick up a crossbow and do pretty well at it. Um, crossbows, they are generally more accurate than a bow. Uh, they can do more damage with more money instead of more skills. Um, and crossbows use bolts as ammunition. Uh, the best bolts you can get are the ones that say plus two to damage. So uh, look for those. Bows are governed by the power draw skill. You need to have a high power draw uh, in order to effectively use a bow, uh, because it greatly increases the damage. Um, unlike crossbows, where you have to spend more money to do more damage, bows, you can buy a cheaper bow and just level up power draw and do as much damage as an expensive crossbow. Um, the downside to the bow is, of course, you need to spend the points to be able to use it. But if you plan on doing most of your damage from range, bows are the better investment. Because as you level up, you can do more damage, uh, and bows 
always fire and reload faster than crossbows do. The best arrows you can get for a bow are ones that say plus three damage. So look for that when you're buying the arrows that go with the bow. Um, with both bows and crossbows, you have to have both the weapon and the ammo that they use equipped to be able to use them. Thrown weapons, uh, such as, uh, there we go, throwing daggers, some throwing axes, and uh, throwing spears, um, they generally have less range and accuracy than either bows or crossbows, uh, but they can do a lot more damage per shot. Um, to be able to effectively use a thrown weapon, you have to, have to, put points into the power throw skill. Um, otherwise, there's no point. You won't do anything with them. Uh, most thrown weapons can also be used as melee. Uh, as you can see with these, uh, the javelins and the jareds, uh, there's not much ammo. You can throw five of these, throw four of those. You can throw 13 daggers. So you'll, you'll throw out your first four of these javelins and then save the last one for melee so that you're not, a uh, you're not helpless out on the battlefield. Um, weapon stats, you might notice here. Uh, balanced, the first, is in, the first stat that you look for is in the name. Uh, the first word here, balanced, uh, that is a weapon modifier. Um, the positive weapon modifiers that you want to look for are balanced, tempered, and masterwork. All of these um, will increase the damage of the weapon, um, as well as uh, sometimes uh, some modifiers, uh, such as heavy and strong, will increase the damage, but they will also increase the weight and decrease the speed. So heavy and strong, they're kind of trade-offs. Uh, you want to be careful about choosing to use them. Um, and then ones that you want to avoid are the bal are the uh, modifiers bent, cracked, rusty, and chipped, because they're just a flat-out um, negative effect on all the stats. Uh, now, the positive modifiers and the trade-offs, they will all increase the price of the weapon, um, while the negative modifiers will decrease the price of the weapon. But eventually, you'll want to invest in a good uh, balanced timbered or masterwork weapon. The next step that you look down, you see the uh, weight. Uh, the weight affects your overall encumbrance, which uh, is how fast you can move on the battlefield when you're off of a horse, um, as well as how fast you can switch from a block to an attack. So a lower weight will make it so you can block and then attack afterwards a lot faster. Higher weights, it takes longer to do that. Um, the different types of damage that weapons can do, there are three types. There's cutting damage, piercing damage, and blunt damage. Cutting damage is done by swinging a weapon with a blade, like a sword or an axe. Um, cutting damage does bonus damage against opponents who are lightly armored. The less armor your target has on, the more damage you will do to them with a cut. Piercing damage is delivered by spears, uh, a lot of thrown weapons, uh, and bows and arrows. Piercing damage uh, penetrates armor, so it, it will ignore your opponent's uh, defenses and pierce through and do the damage to them anyway. Blunt damage is done, let's see, there we go, by thrusting, you see with this long axe, or damage done by hammers and other, you know, blunt weapons. Blunt damage um, does higher damage against heavily armored opponents. So the more armor your opponent has on, the more damage uh, is going to be dealt with them with a blunt weapon. Uh, blunt weapons also have a greatly decreased amount of damage that they do to lightly armored opponents. 
So if your opponent doesn't have a lot of armor on, you don't want to be doing blunt damage to them. The other thing with blunt weapons is uh, they can never kill your target. If the final blow to your opponent is dealt blunt damage, uh, they will just be knocked out, which is kind of handy if you want to take them as a prisoner after the battle. Um, the next stat on weapons is their speed rating. Speed just determines how fast you can attack and how fast you can block. Um, a weapon with high weight but uh, can be offset by having a high speed, being able to uh, block and swing faster. Uh, and then finally, the last stat on all weapons is the weapon reach. Weapon reach is just like it, what it sounds like. It's how far away you can hit somebody. Um, if you're going to be attacking from horseback, you want a weapon with a higher reach so that you can actually manage to hit them. Uh, and then there are some other things here. Um, all axes have a bonus against shields. Uh, heavy hammers have a ability that they crush through blocks, which means that it doesn't matter if your opponent tries to parry or throw up a shield against you. Uh, you can break. There's a chance to break through that and do the damage anyway. Um, as well as these weapons are considered unbalanced. And unbalanced uh, means that it takes you a lot longer time to switch from blocking to attacking, uh, regardless of whatever the speed or weight of the weapon is. Um, so yeah, you want to... Uh, with, with unbalanced weapons, it can be offset uh, by leveling up the proficiencies uh, for those weapons. Now, the uh, next thing we want to cover are shields. Uh, shields all have their health here, their weight, which, oh, oh, of course, affects your uh, encumbrance. Um, resistance is how much damage they take off of an attack. Um, so if a shield with a resistance of zero is hit by a sword, and the shield will take 20 damage... A shield with a resistance of 10, hit by the same sword, will take only 10 damage. The resistance is subtracted from the damage of the weapon before taking, on, taking away from the uh, durability of the shield. Size affects how much of you are, is uh, covered when you have the shield up. A shield with a size of around... Uh, let's see... All of these are pretty big... Uh, Shield with a size of around 40 or 60 will cover mostly the upper half of your body. Uh, bigger shields will cover more of your body, uh, making you less vulnerable to ranged attacks from those angles. Uh, some shields cannot be used on horseback because they are too big. They are the board shields. Uh, board shields, uh, though they cannot be used on horseback, they are usually have higher resistance and durability, so they're better if you're fighting on foot. And the speed rating, of course, determines how fast you can block with the shield, how fast you can switch from not blocking to actively blocking. So a higher speed rating is always better. All shields can have modifiers in front of them. Uh, the good modifiers that you want to look for are reinforced and thick. Uh, bad modifiers are battered and cracked. And then there's a couple of descriptors that can go with shields, such as uh, old, heavy, and plain. Now, old, heavy, and plain are not actual modifiers. They are considered uh, separate items altogether. So, like, you have a regular kite shield, and then a plain kite shield is a separate item kite shield. That can also have a modifier. So you can find a battered, plain kite shield. Avoid those. I think that covers everything I wanted to talk about. Um, now you kind of understand what you're looking at when you look at this weaponsmith. Uh, and yeah, you can choose a loadout that works the best for the playstyle you want to have. Uh, so, uh, thanks for watching. Um, 
as always, uh, if you have any suggestions for what you'd like to see covered in future videos, uh, leave it in the comment below. Uh, I want to do more shorter videos like this where I cover one specific thing. Um, in the next video, which you should be seeing one day from when this one goes up, uh, I'll be covering how to use all the different weapons, how to use a thrown weapon, how to switch it to melee and when to do that, uh, how to effectively use a polearm on a horse, which can be a little bit tricky, uh, how to time your crossbow reloading, stuff like that. Uh, how to block. All useful things to know. Uh, and look for the next one soon. The end.